Welcome back, Achievers, for a very, very special spoiler cast for The Last of Us Part 1. Now, of course, the spoiler-er, spoiler-e, I don't know how to, how to say that, but someone that's very welcomed back, of course, the one, the only. Alex, how are you? Hello, everyone. I am back for the special one. Yeah, we, uh, we missed you. I, um, of course, he had the baby everything's fine you have two children now very healthy yep. I mean, we're all see, happy for you to you see toys everywhere yeah. i was like nah, i'm not even cleaning this up this right is now. it's like the last of us there's environment or storytelling happening behind alex you could tell there's a mm -hmm. shy i just need a little bit of you know green leaves mm -hmm. and mold everywhere and some overtake yeah yeah some spores alex we yeah. gathered today because the last of us part one came out and we have both beaten and both have platinumed i have i'm pretty sure you have yeah. to right Yes. So yeah, we, played, yeah, we have played this very thoroughly. So we're going to be talking about the game. Of course, we're going to spoil the game. We're going to do a light review of the game as well. There's a couple topics we're going to touch upon, but we're basically going to dismantle this whole game. Important note, we will pretty much not spoil part two. If that's a worry that you have, if we do, we will make it very clear and you'll be able to skip ahead. But aside from that, we're going to just jump right into this. Let's talk about Last of Us part one. Alex, I wanted to first start with history with the game. I want to first ask you, what, how did you play this game? How, first off, you played on PS5, of course, but when did you pick it up for the first time? The very first time I played Last of Us Part 1 was either the PS4 remaster or I had to... I, mean, see, I don't remember playing the PS3 version. Okay. So I think it was the PS4 remaster. I, so, I hadn't, hadn't played Last of Us before. Okay. But so, I knew about it. So you had played it on PS4 2014, 2015-ish yeah. time, probably? Yeah. yeah. I, it's a very similar story. So in 2014, I had purchased the PS4, I want to say in, around the fall time. And there was a special mm -hmm. edition... Like, the the PlayStation was the PlayStation, but it came with Last of Us Remastered. I remember that. And I bought that. And, yep. I, and that was my first time playing it. I didn't have anything spoiled for me, surprisingly. So that was my first time playing it. Um, mm -hmm. But important to note, that was my first time playing it. And I have not played it since. I did the first playthrough. I heard that the Platinum was awful. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you have to do, like, a bunch of online. And then, like, the story mm -hmm. stuff was really hard or something. And I was like, no thanks. And I played it through, enjoyed it, played Left Behind. And then peaced out until right now. So I've I played it one time. So this was kind of um, this was fun because really I un I knew the beats, but I don't know the game as well as I would know some of my other favorite games. So this yeah. was kind of like playing it, uh, for the first time again, sort of. Yeah, Although I knew there was a lot of parts I didn't remember. Oh, there was a lot. We'll go over all of that, but there was a good bit. Um, so this is my second time. Yeah, we did platinum it. I enjoyed the platinum run. Um, I loved the chapter select was a little bit better in this one. Um, yeah. I feel like it, it yeah. was portioned out very well. So it was really nice to go back to, to get those collectibles and then, mm -hmm. uh, to talk briefly about the collectibles. Great. I think every game should yeah. really take notes with last of us part, part one, um, and part two collectibles. I love reading the little notes. I love mm -hmm. finding the comics. Although I was, I, I wish we yeah, had a little yeah, more dialogue. Like a naughty dog thing, because Uncharted does the same thing. Yeah, I, I wish we had a little more dialogue with with the comics. We just pick it up, and mm -hmm. Joel just says, "I got a comic," and Ellie's like, "It's cool." Hoping, and I was like, "I wish I could." I talk was hoping about it. once you had them all, you there was a thing where you get to read the whole all, all of them. That'd be really cool. I, I wouldn't be shocked if Naughty Dog eventually releases those or something. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Um. But um, but yeah, let's let's jump into. It. I have a couple things written down here. I want to talk, uh, really quick. Just what are you, some of your favorite parts? Again, this was kind of our only second time playing the game. Or right, what what are some of the levels, chapters, whatever you want to think about? What is something that stands out for the game? Um, I always enjoyed it, especially it looked amazing. Uh, at this re remake was the um, right before you get to the hospital, mm. the giraffe scene. Yes, of course, the probably the most iconic thing from the game, the giraffe scene. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, th I believe that level is highway exit. Uh, so good. Um, when you, yeah. when you, the buildup is really nice too, cause you don't really know what Ellie's doing. Yeah. She's just, she's just running and then you kind of, kind of see glimpses. And what was nice is you begin the level with her being very distant. She's very sad. 
Mm -hmm. um you don't really know why although you can piece together like it could, it's probably everything she's a it's you know the, well, it's what we what just what she just went through you know? it, that but i also think she knows joel is about to end like her journey is about to end like they're gonna mm -hmm. go to the hospital she doesn't really know if he'll stick around although he does say that later on i think yeah. that helps her cheer up a little bit but she's just kind of yeah. down the whole time. And then you get to the draft scene that kind of lifts everyone up. They have a real talk conversation. It's, it was really nice. One of my favorite parts in the game. Um, because it kind of messes with what you th what you think of games. And I think Naughty Dog does it the best is when you go to, you need the ladder. So you like, you get in the sign. He's like, all right, get up there. And you expect her to, to be right there. And she doesn't come. And he's like, what's going on? And you have a really nice scene. But I, yeah. I agree. That is one of my favorites. Um, is that one? What uh, I would probably say that one's my favorite too. But also, I like two other ones. Um, almost right. everything in Bill's Town, just because Bill's real fun, and I like that yeah. this that he's like. Yeah, I do like Bill. I like that he's made these traps, and he's he's kind of mm -hmm. weird, and he's talking to I, himself, and he's like. I do like the witty comments that him and yeah. Ellie go get back and forth. Him and because Ellie are yeah, vicious like each to other, each other. But, I love yeah, it. But, yep. Um, that was always fun. And then Alone and Forsaken. I don't know why I like it so much, but I just like the idea that, like, you're driving around, Joel spots a guy, and he's hurt, and Ellie's like, oh, we gotta help him, and he's like, yep. he's not even hurt. He's and, not even hurt. And yep. he just floors it, because he knows what's gonna happen. It's That just, mm -hmm. that tells us so much about Joel and the little instance, and I love yep. I love those. Those are the three levels that stand out, and of course, the, the final level uh, of the game is very, yep, very memorable, sure. especially the hallway everyone knows what i mean by that mm -hmm. um are there anything else before we go chapter by chapter that you want to pick up or or point out i i thought about discussing the price point a little bit i think we've talked that to death um i happily although we share games i happily would have yeah. spent more money if i if i needed to if i would have had to have yeah. bought this game i wouldn't have blinked twice i would have easily well, I mean, purchased. Could, well there's it's always the thing about the price like you know is the you know is the it's a remake, you know, it's or it's or it's eight hours long. I mean, is it really worth like, you know, the sixty, seventy dollar price point? You have to think about like, you know, did this game like how this game is like taken after you like, you know, this game's amazing. Yeah. Like, you know, it well deserves that price point, you know. Like, I think you know, just the naughty dog on a piece of box exactly. is worth like, seventy dollars well, to me. Oh, exactly. I mean, they've never stirred you wrong. So you're they're we're like, hey, you're guaranteed, like, if you put that price point, I'll do it. Because, I mean, you've never disappointed me before. So I know, you know, I know that you know what you're doing. Yeah. So I happily play that. I don't think we need to stick on that much longer. I, nah. I, 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 I love the game. This is one of my favorite of all time. And mm -hmm. I, I can't wait to talk to you about it today. Um, before we jump chapter by chapter, I want to quickly touch on weapons and leveling. Um, two, two things I want to point <laughs> out with the leveling. Leveling. It's fine. I kind of like it. I, I immediately jumped into Shiv Master. I like, like I like when sure. uh, clickers. I can get away from clickers. That's kind of the most scary part of the game. So once you put that on, like I feel like much better. Um. Oh, and I played this on hard, by the way. Um. I just okay. wanted to. I threw it on hard. Yeah. It. 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 I mean, it was, There were some parts that were difficult. There's one part, and I, when we get to it in the chapters, is I think the hardest level in the game. But aside from that, I. It wasn't that bad, so I played it on yeah. hard, but I didn't really notice too too much of a difference. I still had plenty of stuff on me. I, the mm. the only thing I kind of noticed was I felt like I was kind of low on ammo. Uh, but okay, there was only one time where I was literally out, and I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. But aside from that, I, I thought it was fine. My favorite part is the workbench is so good. Yes. You take it apart, you upgrade. Some of the upgrades are useless. I think. I think I'm, I'm reminded of the revolver. There's an upgrade for the reload speed that makes it five percent faster. I was like, "What's the point of yeah making a five percent?" Yeah, faster? I like. Yeah, no. I if anything from the way I just like the way everything. Every time you level up a gun, you can see that he kind of they show what they're doing to the gun, so it yeah. changes. And I'm like, okay, I I, do, I like the way they do that. Me too. They, they you kind of either get a tool and they like yeah, something you can off. See, like, I think I forget. What, I think it's on one of the guns. Like he puts holes in the barrel or whatever. Like oh it's pretty, it's yeah yeah. Cool. I think the flamethrower. I think he does that with the flame. I don't remember. Um, I like uh. I, my favorite part is when they replace the barrel. I don't know why. The but barrel, yeah. Oh, yeah. When they take a barrel yeah. off and it's like, Tuh. and he like replace. I, so some reason is satisfying mm -hmm. to me. I'm not really sure why, but that that's some yeah. of my favorite part is upgrading those guns. Put the scope on something. And then um, leveling. What was what was the first thing you jumped into? I'm, I'm always curious, like what people use like their 
vitamins or whatever supplements what what was yeah. like the first thing you got if anything i like i i did pretty much just to get double the crafting mm. uh, resources just because i'm always using shivs and i'm always like i'm always using the materials to like um like with the shivs you know you have to use scissors and i think paper i forget what it was and you get the durability yeah. right yeah, yeah yeah so i i read i like using that for that and then the the melee weapons i always like crafting the melee weapons like yeah. if i find a bat i'm like oh you can upgrade it to make it like a spike bat or something yeah i like that too but that's I always, always very yeah, satisfying always get the, to get more resources i always go for that first the training manuals are very satisfying too when you pick them up and like mm -hmm. whenever it was like uh i remember the training manual that gives you um more durability on modded weapons and once you get that done you're like oh i have like three one hit kills on this like bat or something it's very mm -hmm. very cool um all right let's let's jump in let's go we're just gonna go basically throughout the game now and we're gonna talk about chapter by chapter i have a few notes here um let me know if there's a specific chapter you want to talk about alex but it's uh let's we started in hometown that's the chapter name that's where you begin the game you start off as sarah walking around you're kind of this is outbreak day is what it's called in the in universe um some standpoints here is we see early signs of joel being ruthless i'm reminded of when you're driving down the road and there's a family and Tommy and, and both Sarah are like, oh, we have to stop. And Joel says, don't stop. We can't yeah, stop. Like, no. And and they keep going. And that's kind of what I, we get that first taste of like Joel is wants to survive and he doesn't really care what he has to do. Um, yeah. Something um I don't know if you knew this and I don't think many people know this, but they added for when Sarah dies, they added Joel's watch breaking. So in the original mm -hmm. game, it does not break when that happens. The cutscene okay. happens. You can still see his watch is fine. Uh, presumably, it breaks at some point between the twenty year jump. But well, they we know why it's broken. Yeah, in this I mean, one. Um, yeah, we know, well, we know why they added that in. Yeah, they would as a, like a reminder of Sarah's death. Mm -hmm. So they changed. They changed that. I think it was a good change. It is unclear if the watch like broke when he fell. Or if it like I'm blocked a bullet or something, I assume it broke when he fell. Because I assume yeah, I think, yeah. the guy had a rifle, so I don't think a, a watch would do literally anything to like a. No, I, I think yeah, I, th I think once he fell with Sarah in his arms, uh, it it, that's when crazy. it broke. And to stay with the watch for a second, okay. I think that is such a a good thing to know about Joe that like. He never takes it off throughout the entirety yeah. of the game. He always wears that watch as a symbol of he doesn't talk about Sarah, but he never really let go because he's mm -hmm. he can't take the watch off. I don't like I, and I love that you don't you never see him even take it off. He doesn't like make it a big deal. Um, I love that, that scene where Ellie says your watch is broken and he just kind of touches it. He looks away and just doesn't really say anything. And the scene just moves on. And I think the watch is one of the best uh writing decisions made in the game just because it's it says so much that he kept this broken watch from oh for sure one, I for mean, 20 years like that's yeah, a long yeah, time i mean it's a gift it's the last gift he got from his daughter yeah and he just he can't he can't and i think that plays in with the theming of the game of mm -hmm. he he got he had a daughter he lost her and he kind of found another one and he doesn't want that to happen again but we'll cover that yeah. later of course after that, we uh, go to the... It's called the Quarantine Zone. There's a couple things that happens in this one. Notably, we meet Ellie at the end, but to before we get there, I want to stop with uh, start with um, Joel and Tess. It seems that there is some sort of relationship between them. It's unclear if it's strictly platonic. I would assume no, just the way that they talk to each other, but it seems like it definitely is not a love relationship, not in like no, a I think classic sense. I think they've just known each other for so long that they're, they're probably best friends and they just maybe had a fling or something. Yeah, they probably, he, I think he mentions, yeah. he's like, oh, this would, or we could go on a date or, yeah. or he says this something is like about a date. date and, this is like a, yeah. this is kind of like us on a date and she's like, yeah, I, uh, you're such a romantic she jokes that he's like not very romantic or something yeah so um, they either they've had a fling before or they've always had something because even bill later on he's like oh you know where's test you guys are you guys are you guys are yeah. separate separated yeah. so they've been together so long that bill's even surprised they weren't together yeah um and um to circle back to the 20 year time jump i like that we don't and we still don't um mm -hmm. even if you play part two 
uh, light spoiler. Sorry about that, but you don't really know what happens in that 20 years. You can kind of piece together yeah. with a couple letters like throughout the world, but we don't know what Joel really has been through. We get hints that he was ruthless. He mm. survived, right? And I think you have to be if you live 20 years in this world, but you get kind of hints that he was probably a hunter or he at least was someone that killed people for maybe resources or something, but we don't really know. And I, li- and I kind of like that. I like that. We just, we mm-hmm. just kind of have to guess, like we assume he's ruthless yeah. throughout the game, yeah. but we don't really know what he did. No, I mean, I'm just, we, we assume that, you know, he's been through some stuff. Yeah. Um, this ends with, of course, uh, the car, uh, the last one, the cargo. I love that one. Cause he uh that that is a reference to them getting ellie for the first time and mm-hmm. we're introduced to marlene um i meant to cover this before but of course marlene played by i think her name is marlene or merlel dandridge and we'll cover the full cast in a second but um everyone's uh acting is amazing Phenomenal. in this game like yeah. it's i think uh it, it should be like in books written by like game devs like I, I when I see a character like I don't even see really a video game person I just see someone it's, acting kind of in front of me it's very cause, strange because I know in game awards you know we get you know you know we have like oh you know best performing or whatever you know for certain voice actors but I don't I'm not familiar with other uh award shows like so for example Oscars mm, yeah. or Emmys like would would you think it's weird if like for is Oscars for movies correct yeah do you would you would you would it be weird to add a video game character Ooh, for the performance i love that, that question i love that question because, um, I mean, because their performance i mean i mean Tor, troy baker and you know ashley johnson I, I would give them an oscar yeah i would too i would give them whatever the highest accolade we could possibly like, give why them. don't video games count it's a, it's a media, so why couldn't they be part of that? That's a great question. I'm sure someone listening right now probably knows more than I do. I don't know the Oscars mm-hmm. well, but I don't even think they allow TV shows. Do they allow TV shows on there? I think they do. So it's either I'll... Oscars or Emmys, whichever ones that, that allows like other medias other than big hype tech movies. Yeah. So like whatever one that does both movies and TV shows, I feel like yeah, exactly. At that one. some point, we should probably do best acting performance in a video. I mean, game. like I don't think that's I mean, crazy. Like imagine um, the in Red Dead Two for people. I mean, it's kind of Man, the main character of Red Dead Two, Arthur yeah. Morgan. His acting was great. But I mean, blew me away. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, like it's awesome. So I, yeah, I agree that the, there we should do something like I would love if something someone did something in in that category like just best acting this period just in yeah. in video games yeah. and, and I mean, that means in everything Troy Baker my God yeah Troy she's his I think it's called discography is amazing mm-hmm. as long as a dictionary probably at this point <laughs> um but yeah we end uh it's clear that Joel and Tess don't really want to bring on the cargo they need these mm-hmm. guns but. They're like, uh, but uh, Marlene's like, we already sold them, but I'll get you the guns if you do me a favor. And it's transporting this girl. And, they, and I like that they don't really tell her why. They're like, oh, okay, we'll smuggle this girl out, whatever. But we don't know why until mm-hmm. the test is performed on her. And she comes up as infected, which is strange. Mm-hmm. But she, noth- but she's immune. Yep. That was, that is, that is really cool. That if, if she is tested, it says infected but yeah. nothing is going on with her so she has the stuff but it just yeah, no, isn't like, yeah, like right not doing now, anything like yeah so like right now she's probably like deep in she she would be like a clicker if if it was normal mhm yeah yeah but she like, would be she would be yeah she'd be pretty something. messed up it'd be it, it takes 2 days i think to kill someone when they're bitten so mm-hmm. it's pretty fast um we uh leave that with them leaving we go to the outskirts uh, this is when you go to the outside downtown. This is when Tess dies. Um, she goes out. She gets bitten. Um, when Joel, mm-hmm. uh, Tess, and Ellie get split up, um, and she's and that kind of convinces her like we have to do this because this is two hours I think ago or something, and she's like she's been bitten for three weeks and I'm already she was like already kind of feeling strange, so that kind of motivates Joel, and I do like the the subtlety of of if there was anything between us you'll do this for me and i was like wow that was a very powerful scene very it was very quick mm-hmm. it was very powerful like with tess kind of just begging joel to do this and he finally goes like fine like, like, and he, yeah. he just still doesn't really want to do it but he's like 
no for sure feels kind of compelled so he's like whatever i'll do it he, yeah she was she was like as my dying wish you yeah. know i need you to do this yeah and then uh, a little bit past that we get kind of a sprinkling of joel just not wanting to talk about it she's like hey i'm uh, ellie says i'm sorry about Tess, and he just goes do not bring her up anymore like yeah that just tells you how he's dealing with mm-hmm. grief is just not talking about yeah, it he's yeah he, he yeah he's not good with grief now, clearly and then um we get little sprinklings but we get it more in the the next chapter but we get little sprinklings that joel's just kind of annoyed he doesn't really want a kid with him my favorite one of my favorite uh examples of this is her whistling she's like <laughs> she's doing that and he's like what are you doing he's like i'm trying to whistle and he's like oh my god and then i like that i think at the end of that chapter she mm-hmm. just she just goes she finally, she finally she's like whistles. i learned and he goes that's something else you can annoy me with and i was like god mm-hmm. he very much does not like her really much right now and i like that yeah. it just keeps being played up that he's like oh my god like you're gonna annoy me with this now and he's an and he's he's kind of annoyed about the comic books but he still grabs him for it and things so mm-hmm. very, very fun then we get into this is bill's town again i love this one um so I feel like we get a lot of, we kind of get a lot of background on Joel here, but again, it's all subtext. It's never really told, but you have to assume a lot of things. Yeah. So Joel says he knows he's here, but he's never been here before. So that, that insinuates that, that Bill and them were friendly and that he knows where Bill would have went to whenever they finished whatever they did. So this is the first time they've met. And what I find most interesting, and I would love to know, but again, I love that we don't know, but but he but he comes to he, they finally meet up with Bill after like going through the traps and finding him like in his little safe house place. And and Joel Joel goes, uh, I I need uh, a car. And Bill goes, if I had a battery, I'm not gonna give it to you. And Joel just kind of says, like, but you owe me. And that's all he says. And Bill goes, mm-hmm. fine. And I'm like, wow, what, what did is it? What did Joel do so bad that not only is he gonna get get him a battery throughout his town with full of infected, but he also mentions that if he had the battery, he would leave. So he's giving up both a battery he wants and one that he doesn't even know it's there. So what Joel must have done Sometimes. something crazy to, to to talk to just be able to mention you owe me and bill goes fine and that's crazy and then we get the banter of course that you mentioned between bill and ellie throughout this whole chapter is so great mm-hmm. um i love that yeah, she, that she uh goes through his comics or or magazines or whatever records. he got over there the records too and he just he just like smacks her hands like stop touching my shit and just walks away mm-hmm. it's very cool you were yeah, going he's to, like, don't mention. you touch anything, but you lose shit. Yeah, he calls her a little shit a lot. I don't know. <laughs> he very much likes that. Mm-hmm. He very much likes that. But yeah, all the banter between them. I mean, every time they say something to that, I'm pretty much smiling just because it's, mm-hmm. it's very fun. Um, and then he mentions that he had a partner. He doesn't really go into it, but we find later that his partner was a gay partner that he had, which kind of goes back into how sad this universe is just kind of how down everything is because we don't even find the lover was even like like in a good spot he was bitten he hung himself after Mm -hmm. getting bitten but then in his dying suicide letter spent it lamenting how much he hated him how Mm -hmm. much he hated bill which is like salt on the wound and then more salt and then burning the salt off of your body like the like how incredibly sad that entire almost like b plot not even b plot it's like a c plot happening in the background that he didn't really know about and bill's just Mm -hmm. talking of how sad of how he like he's like good luck so, yeah good luck he was like kind of pissed he's like what are you and then he finds like the stuff he's like what are you gonna steal my shit and leave i forget his name do you remember the guy's name that he oh god i don't remember uh, I, i'm struggling here yeah if, if you can try and find it it's fine but um uh oh and i, I there, when i was doing my collectibles run frank. i frank thank you thank you um when i was doing my collectibles run i had director's commentary on for some scenes and this stood out for me because uh, Neil Druckmann brings up this scene with Bill staring at Frank, and for and he he you can see in his face Bill goes from like sadness 
and like in a weak spot, he cuts him down. He looks at him for a second. He's very sad. And then within a few seconds, the bill persona's back and he like puts his face back on and, and he's like acting like he doesn't care. And he's like good riddance or, you know, he, he talks shit and walks away. And I thought that was great acting as well. That, that was just another example of the amazing acting in this game. Yeah, it's, um, I didn't know that, um, Bill never finds out about Tess's death. No, no, no. Joel never yeah, talks about yeah. it. Yeah, and I, and my I'm wondering if maybe like because if is it Bill was good friends with Tess, I wonder if maybe he he liked her or something. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah that, that was unclear. He definitely wanted to know because he kept bringing it up. He was like, uh, and he was just like, ah, we, uh, I think Joel says we had differences or or she had something. Or she was busy or something, and Bill just laughs it off like, sure. So like. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Bill kind of thinks like something bad happened or like, I don't think he's, he's jumping to she's dead. I think he's just like, all right, something bad happened. Either they got into an argument or, or she's yeah. hurt or something. But, but yeah, I, I, that is a good point that at no point does Joel again, as an example of him trying to handle his grief, he just doesn't bring it up. Doesn't talk about it. Whenever he brings it up, he just kind of deflects and doesn't really yeah. say anything. Now, I'm pretty sure I nailed these. I had to go this off memory because I couldn't find a, 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 a seasonal breakdown. But it does have a seasonal theme throughout the game. And I believe mm-hmm. this is when fall hits. Pretty sure. We're going into Pittsburgh. Now, this is one of my favorite levels of Alone and Forsaken. Uh, that's the chapter called. And you're driving and he's, you know, a guy comes out. He's like, oh, I'm hurt. Um, mm-hmm. And he's like, ha. And then we get a little taste of Joel at the end of that encounter. Whenever, when you kill everyone and you're done... First off, you open that door and you see these people are chopping people up, mm-hmm. assumably to eat them, which is like, whoa. Um, yeah. But Ellie goes, how did you know? And Joel just says, I've been on both sides of, of that ambush. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow. So he's not even hiding. He's not even hiding that no. he's he's been one of these people that. Yeah. And yeah. And, and then she was like, how many? What, she either says, how many people have you killed or how many? Uh, she asks how many. Th- I think I forget what it was. She said she, 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 she was No, like, you're right. How many times you done this or how many people have you killed? I think I think like, he yeah. said something. He just again deflects. He's he's like, eh. and it's and just doesn't think about it again. This guy probably yeah. has killed. I mean, fifty plus easily, yeah. probably. So yeah, like, like, like technically, Joel is a bad guy. I mean, Joel's pretty bad, and we'll we'll get into yeah. that theming at the end. But yeah, is is, is Joel a bad guy, or uh, or is he just yeah. a product? Who knows? We'll we'll talk about that at the end. Um, Hotel Lobby, one of the chapters in this game, loved it. This is a, this is a perfect example of why I love The Last of Us setting so much. So it's been twenty years since Outbreak Day. And it has a beautiful fusion of nature overtaking the world that we currently live in. And I think Mm -hmm. the hotel lobby is a perfect example of what I mean by that. So when you walk in, you can still tell it's a hotel lobby, but there's vines everywhere. This grass, the, the first off things broken through the the building. Yeah. Yeah. Holes everywhere because there's bombings and there's Mm -hmm. light coming through the, the, the lobby, like illuminating the ground and things. There's so many things that point out. Mm -hmm. um one of the funniest things in these games is like you guys trust elevators a lot because it's been 20 years you jumping on the when he jumped on the elevator i'm like what did you expect bro (laughs) it's been 20 years no one's maintained this 20 if not longer years and you're just jumping around this thing no wonder it fell um and then um let's see and if i'm if i'm remembering correctly i should be nailing this joel has the near-death experience here as At you're going the through the level, he's getting like yeah, he's getting pushed into the water. Yeah, he is going to die. I think if Ellie was not there, I think it was pretty given that he would die, he would yeah. die there. So yep. and then um, Ellie shot that dude in the face, right in the face, and that is her first kill. And then it, it kind of points uh, Joel's, um, I guess you could say, thick headedness here because he his first mm-hmm. response is to lash out at her. He immediately goes like, "What are you doing? I told you to wait." And she goes like, like bro, I, I love her. Died. Well, I love her response is like, but you're happy I didn't, right? <laughs> this is like, I, you would be dead right now if I didn't. Yeah, right. And she's like trying to reason with him. He's like, no. And he's just not having it. And this is her first time of her kind of lashing back, which I like. He, she she finally takes it. He's like, you you could say, good job, Ellie. Hey, thanks. I'm not dead, Ellie. Like, things like that. And he just basically shrugged it off. He's like, shut up. And, and he's just like, yeah. 
Uh, oh, and he, he goes like, from now on, you listen to me. And it's, yeah. su- and it's such a strange response to how he was doing it, because he would have been dead, but he just doesn't, he just is seething with I mean, rage. I'm that, wondering that if maybe he's just disappointed himself that he's like, oh, you know, I'm, I didn't, I, I didn't see that dude come in or something. Yeah, I think, I think it's a mix of that. I think it's a mix of like, just this, uh, I'm blanking on Ellie's age, 11? She's four, she's, no, she's 14. 14, I was way off. Um, she's 14. I, I fuck my fuck up made this 14 year old have to shoot someone in the face. Maybe that's a little bit of it too. I don't know. But in the following scene, he go, he goes from not letting her have a gun to, Hey, take this rifle and cover me while I go kill Mm -hmm. these fucking people. And this is actually the level I mentioned earlier. This was incredibly hard. This is, this is really the only level I had difficulties with because of there's a sniper there's people running at you with melee weapons. Mm-hmm. I have people on my left shooting me every now and then. There's a Molotov. This was incredibly hard on on the hard setting, uh, but it was it was still fun. But I was getting my ass kicked. Um, but but I enjoy I enjoyed this level. I, I love this kind of onslaught. One of my favorite parts of Last of Us is when you have these kind of set pieces where it's like, all right, we have to hold this ground or you have to like kill like these people. It's very satisfying. Um, and then uh, uh, Ellie is trusted with a gun at the end of this. Yeah. I like the throughout each each level because you can completely miss it. The optional conversations. Yep, we didn't actually bring um, that up. That's a good bring up that. Uh, um, uh, uh, like for example, in this one, you know, there's like a, a body hanging right yeah. right there in that in that, and literally the first time I played it, I completely skipped it. I yep. didn't even see it, but I went back towards the uh, for the collection uh, the collectibles. And it was said that was one of the optional dialogues. I'm like, oh, so I started walking up to it and they started just talking and giving more, you know, just more and more conversation. I was like, oh, conversation. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. yeah, I like I that. Was like, I love that the game has way more. You can literally skip a bunch of like dialogue or you can have extra dialogue. Mm-hmm. Like later on, there's one about her talking about that. She's in she was in the the school, the military school. Yes, yes, para, yeah. they find, like, paramilitary school, and she was like, yeah, mm-hmm. I was there, too. We see a little bit of that in Left Behind, yeah. um, where she was in, like, dorms and things, and, and she mm-hmm. had training, which kind of highlights why she's good with guns. I actually, yeah. that was one of the things I forgot when I was playing this game at the beginning. When she used it, I was like, how does she know how to use guns? Like, that's kind of, like, unreasonable, and then, of course, playing this game, I'm like, of course, yeah. first off. Why would you not teach any everyone how to use yeah, a gun exactly. in this terrible place? And then second off, yeah. every checkpoint, whatever you want to call them, areas are under martial law. So that means the military is in charge. So of course mm-hmm. the military are going to train you like a bunch of military grunts, and they're Soldiers, just yeah. they're, and they're going to teach you all the stuff. So that was yeah. a, that is a good point to to bring up. Yeah, and I I yeah, love the if I uh, that conversation. We would have known she was in you know in a school. And I love when, uh, since you brought up the hanging body, I like that uh, Ellie goes like, oh, that's brutal. And Joel quickly hits that with, that's not much different than what the military does. He, he goes like, the military does yeah. pretty much the same shit. And, and I love that you keep with that gray. There's no black and white really in this game. Everything is just mm. this unclear gray. Even the fireflies are not, it's not clear that they're good, but I think they think they are, but are they the yeah. military clearly yeah. are drunk with some sort of power that they have to um and then of course at the end of this chapter we meet henry and sam one of the saddest mm-hmm. i think of the of the entire franchise um are these two what happens to them um but uh first off uh, i loved uh henry and sam of course played by let me grab them real quick um sam is played i'm gonna mess this up i apologize najid jeter and then Henry is played by Brandon Scott, both incredible actors um, in yeah, these scenes. This is the part that I was saying that I had completely forgot was in this game. I forgot that you have this, this, the suburbs scenes with the with them and the sewers and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think if I have to say one favorite part of the game, I want to say it might be the sewers because it mixes uh, a lot of environmental storytelling. It mixes. A story of Ishmael. I don't know if people caught on to this. So if you do the collectibles, it tells a very beautiful story. So the when you hit the sewers level, of course, like Joel was like drowning and like comes back on, on to the, like, the sea bank and they like go through the sewers that they find. But you find a, a ship that's been banked. And if you read it, you read that the captain was like 
out on a shipping trip, I think, I, I, or he was like fishing and he comes back like I think a few days after outbreak day. And like he's like, everything's fucked up and he goes and hides in the sewers. And then you'll find later on that Ish is like writing like letters and things. And you find out that like mm -hmm. at first he wasn't letting people in, but then he started letting people in. He started making and a community started a school. Yep. Yeah. He started bringing kids in. There was a bunch of families. What I like is the story is told almost perfectly through Ishmael's perspective, but we're going through the level backwards. So if you remember, you start off from the end of the sewers, but once you leave out, if you remember, you walk out and you turn around and it says, don't open infected inside. And everyone just goes, are mm -hmm. you fucking serious? <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted to bring a few things up in this uh, chapter, Alex, to you. You're a fan of Days Gone, so am I. Yes. We get a lot of, and this is going to get a little dark, uh, apologies, achievers. Also, Alex, if you want to skip this, of course, let me know, but... <laughs> There are infected kids in Days Gone. Yeah. There are no kids at all in Last of Us. Now, you do see bodies of children. I'm reminded of the RV near the end of the game where it's a picture of a family. And if you turn it around, it says, forgive us. It's and a, then it's... Yeah, and there's a cover over there's a, the body. There's a cover so over... you kind of see an outline, but you, you know, your mind, you, you put it, two and two together. Yeah, it's clearly children there. Yeah. There aren't any infected That's kids. Hard. It's pretty rough. There's a lot that of rough. Hard. This is pretty rough. And I think I definitely understand not wanting to put infected kids in a game. I mean, that's it's it's pretty dark. I was actually shocked in Days Gone and no one even mentioned it. I was kind of shocked that no one really brought it up that like mm -hmm. we are killing children. And I was just interested that do you think they didn't include it just because it's kind of, you know, it's kind of in bad taste, right? You know? maybe a little yeah. do you think that's kind of why i mean i uh, i mean it could be that because it could be you know there could be some like things that are sensitive yeah or but maybe that's just that's not what they're going for mm. so you know like you know you want to hope you know that the kids get out things like that but they don't want to emphasize but like yeah no look you know they're they're there but they with the rv scene they kind of have to be like they do have to be like but you know there was a story here. here. Yeah, there's a, there story, a story like right there, and I mean, it did happen. Yeah, it says for you know forgive us. So the, I mean, I took from that it's like you know they didn't want their kids to live up in this world in this the, uh, messed up one. Yeah, I couldn't tell what I. I mean, I think it's meant uh, to be great. I was like, are, were they infected? Maybe, and they were like, well, we no. we can't let them. I don't know. Um, I don't know, I think but it's, yeah, it, I think it's like they just they're like we can't let them be in this world or something. Yeah, I could I couldn't tell, but. Um, yeah, oh, and uh, since we're bringing up the, the very dark subjects, <laughs> uh, something that points out to me in this game, it kind of tells what Joel, it gives a reasoning why Joel didn't end his life. And I know this is, uh, again, mm -hmm. getting very dark here, but we find the scene with Ellie and Joel going through, I want to say it was an apartment building, and you go into the bathroom and you see a couple clearly committed suicide together. And oh, Ellie yeah. says, oh, they took the, the easy way out. And Joe goes, mm -hmm. trust me, it it that is not the easy way out. And that's yeah, kind of yeah. that's kind of it. That's all he says. And it kind of tells you that Joel kind of wanted to, but just can't. He kind yeah. he kind he doesn't really want he didn't really want to, but he just couldn't. Just that little line of like, tr like trust me, it isn't the easy, easy way. Mm -hmm. I think was spoke. It's you could write essays on just that once one line. I think. Yeah. Um, and again, uh, I want to circle back to Ishmael's incredible let out. This is one of my favorite things in all of games is the, the collectibles that tells the story of Ish. And then apparently the only thing that killed all of those people was someone left the door open. That's what that's it. So that that's all it took is it, it once you leave and go into the suburbs, there's one last letter of Ish. And someone had apparently left the door open when I think they left. And then they came back and every everything was fucked. Um, and that one is little, so sad. The one little yeah. mistake. One, one mistake killed everyone inside there. It's fucked up. Let's see here. That's pretty much the level. Of course, we end incredibly sadly. It looks like at some point um, Sam, Sam was got, bitten or... Bit. Okay, it was bitten. It looked like bitten. scratches. Okay, it... 
when the pan when it panned down my my first time playing the game i was like oh he got bit the second time i was like wait are those scratches but i was like but yeah, I, I think it was it was a bite mark i think it was too it's just it was so fast i couldn't tell but i think and like with last of us they always they always it's like every zombie game you know like certain things look you know scratch bite all counts but like a bite mark is way more um reflecting like you're like oh you know it's a, it's a bite you yeah know, versus like oh you know you guys scratched you know i was like oh maybe you know but a bite mark is like you know it's there's no going back yeah ain't going, ain't going back and um it, he clearly he was scared more symbolic yeah and also um i love that he was kind of trying to make light of it with ellie he was like do you think there's people like you think people are still in there and ellie not knowing the situation just goes no no they're they're gone they're long gone and he just kind of goes silent for a second and then it, and the he ellie lets him go to sleep she leaves the room and he just kind of looks at his yeah and you were told that he got scratched Cause, yeah because yeah, cause when he got the toy he threw it on the floor and i was like that's yeah, right yeah i was like i remember and then um the next morning is heartbreaking um yep, henry he's like everybody was all cool go, go wake him up and ellie does and he's he's he's, well, he's just he's just standing there and shaking a little bit yep and goes to attack him joel immediately goes to shoot him and henry go it shoots the ground like don't you dare you can't and he's yeah. and he and i love joel just goes Fuck it goes henry does it points the gun at them joel's like i'm gonna take the gun away like it's okay and of course we all know how it ends mm -hmm. um and henry was like i fuck yeah it. fuck this yeah um very very sad I, I think it is the saddest thing i think in both games and I, I grew I grew to love their relationship very well, although Henry was a bit of a hard ass. Um, but you can under, mm -hmm. you can understand probably why. Yeah. That ends. We pick up back going towards uh, Tommy. Um, I believe all Joel knows that Tommy is near here. I don't think he knows like he's in a settlement or anything. I think yeah. he just knows that Tommy should be around this area. Yeah, he's in around this area. And um, it looks like there was a pretty large falling out between joel and tommy uh, apparently tommy wanted to join the fireflies because he had it um i believe joel's exact words was like sympathize with their message but then joel mm -hmm. joel was very much not in that realm at all and i love that uh she ellie just goes so like what happened between you two and he's like why aren't you guys together and he just goes i think his last words were i never want to see your fucking face ever again or something like that mm -hmm. and i was like okay yeah, yeah so something really like, bad happened. yep yeah and he's like something pretty bad happened um but then of course you you go to the settlement you walk through you get the trophy for not high-fiving ellie which is very sad i had to actually mm -hmm. restart the checkpoint because so, i felt way too bad for not high-fiving so, so i forgot that that's what you were supposed to do and i was running around like I was, I just ran past her real quick. I didn't, I forgot that you, that, that happens with the high five and I just started running and she's like, oh, okay then. And I was like, I was like, mm -hmm. no, I was, I wanted to high five you. And then I got the trophy and I was like, well, okay, I guess I didn't miss anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I had read the trophies prior and I was like, oh, this is, I didn't know actually what they meant by left hanging. I was like, is she hanging from a rope or something yeah. that I don't remember? And then I, as soon as she went to high five me, I was like, oh, leave her hanging for the high five. And yeah. I felt so guilty. I immediately restarted the checkpoint and high fived her because, like, she would seem so down when I didn't high five her. Mm -hmm. um, I want to quickly go to this again, continuing the theme of loss. We're talking with Tommy, we're talking with Joel. Joel goes, Hey, we need to talk privately because I need to basically tell you that I have the savior of humanity with me and I need to get her to the fireflies. Mm -hmm. But before that, Tommy grabs a picture of Sarah. So they apparently they had went back to. Chicago, he went back to, uh, Texas, Texas. Thank you. Yeah, couldn't uh, completely blanked on where they used to live. Yeah, he went, so yeah, he went back to Texas. Texas, found the picture, gave it to him, and Joe refuses it. And I was, I remember the first time I played it, I was shocked, and this time it's no different. I was just incredibly shocked. Where it's like he can't even, he can't even Look have the it. picture. Like he, well, I, he looked I, at I, it and I, went, I, "I'm, I, I'm good." I would, I will. I feel like he, Joe feels like he's. uh um it doesn't like he does he's he's disappointed or, or or not or not disappointed her um he let her down you know she yeah. died you know Bailed. he was like you know i i feel I, i'm not worthy of that yeah yeah um this is of course the chapter where ellie runs away you can tell that there's a weird relation not relationship sorry there's a weird kind of in between between mm -hmm. joel and her and she's kind of 
being distant a little bit. She's very sad that that she's about to lose someone again. And yeah. she runs away. She steals a horse, runs away to this ranch house. And Joel finds her again. And they go hard at each other. They go hard. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if you remember the scene better than I do, but I believe Ellie says something on the lines of, I'm not like Sarah. And you could tell that just, mm-hmm. and you could tell Joel's face just no, went he, from yeah, like, she's like, I'm not, I'm not, she's like, nothing's going to happen to me. I'm not, I'm not, like, I'm yeah, there. I'm not like Sarah. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not like, you know, I'm not Sarah. And he was like, He's like, no, you're not. Yeah. Or no, he's you no. Know, he says, he said, Ellie, you're running on a really fine, a running a thin line here, real whatever. thin line. And then she says that, and then he's like, you're right. Uh, you're sure as hell not my daughter, and yeah, I sure as ain't hell your dad. ain't your dad. And yeah. it just ends there, and they just walk away. Oof, he gets on the horse. Was like, that was a rough scene. I remember that. Mm-hmm. I forgot it was coming up. It was one of those things where it's like, when we were going to, I was like, what is this about to happen? And then when we get yeah. to the scene, I was like, oh, that's right. They're about to go at each other. They're going to go for mm-hmm. throats here, and they did. And um, uh, and of course, uh, Ellie basically goes like, "Oh, yeah, you know, sorry, uh, I don't want to be left behind again, but like everyone else did." And and Joel kind of breaks a little bit. He he goes um and takes her with. He he basically says to Tommy like, "Hey, if you don't mind, let me take this horse. I'll actually take Ellie." He reiterates where he's going. He's like, this uh, big science building looks like a mirror, right? And Tommy just goes, yeah. And then as he's leaving, Tommy goes, you know, you can you can come back when you're done. Yeah, you have a place here. And Joel just kind of nods and takes the horse and goes away. Yep. And then uh, Ellie, he's, Ellie's like, what? Ellie's like, whoa. She's like, I, that, that's that's definitely mixed signals. I thought we were in a very bad place. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought that was a bit of a... a a hard right turn as well but you know it was a kind of a long walk back so maybe there was maybe joel had time to settle it, down really saying this to a 14 year old 14 that's a good point that's a good point he's probably like eh, i probably shouldn't have said that and then he felt yeah. bad and he's like you know what i'll take you let's let's do it then we go to the university before we start the university i want to bring up my least favorite part of this game and i'm curious if you think think so too Okay. It's simply the weapon, the flamethrower. We are in such a realm of realism in this game, and we get the flamethrower, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, I I, I didn't use it once just because I was like, it's like I have it. Everything is on my back, but the flamethrower. And I'm like, why am I? Why do I have this flamethrower? Like, I literally so use it once, and I'm like, this is so out of place. I'm not yeah. using this. Yeah, it's so strange. I'm very curious who said it. Who I said used the it? Molotovs be- before I used the flamethrower? Yeah, I, I just, it's not a bad weapon. At least a little bit I use, but it just Ooh. feels weird when I'm using the flame. I'm Joel. I, I'm not like a. Honestly, I feel like the Molotovs are stronger. If I like, to are. fight to kill the the bloaters, the big ones. Uh, I think I used three or four Molotovs versus like I had like the flamethrower. I felt like it took forever. I usually with the bloaters, I'll, I'll throw like two Molotovs. And for some reason, I always have shotgun ammo. I'm not really sure why. I mm-hmm. always almost am filled with shotgun. So I always take my shotgun mm-hmm. out and just bam, bam, Your bam. Your subconscious always tells you just have it. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. But I'm my the shotgun was basically the killer of bloaters. Like I took that thing out and I would shoot him in the head, back up, shoot him in the head, back up, you know do the thing mm-hmm. was, uh, that was a good fight but at least it had the subtext of the flamethrower being in the science building at least it was in a university so you can kind of use your magic oh, okay so like go big horns this yeah go big horn the science people maybe went like oh i can make a flamethrower pretty easily they got like name but still it i i just i very much don't like it the, in a game where it's almost not telling you it's a video game that is like the most video gamey weapon you can give somebody is a fucking flamethrower no, for sure Let's see here. Um, oh, I loved the. There are scattered uh, voice recordings around the yes, university. Of the, of the scientist, yeah. And I actually missed this one in my f- my first playthrough of part one. So like, mm-hmm. I missed this collectible in my collectible run. I found the voice recording of why the scientist died because I didn't know why he died. I figured like he got hurt or something. I don't know, but I found out that he had got bit by a monkey that they were testing that they're testing on yep on and i was like 
that's very dangerous why were you playing with this mm -hmm. thing but there's even a voice chord of like i guess him petting it and it, he just gets bit and he's like oh fuck i got bit and he's yeah, just and like, like i'm dead you just find the body just sitting in a chair like looking at the window and yep. that's the second that's where the second verse recorder i think is the la uh, yeah uh, well no that i think that's one? the fourth and the it's, last one yeah it's the I last think? one it's like it's next to the body and he pretty much just said fuck it yeah yeah i assume he did something and ended his life um mm -hmm. and then this is another example of the fireflies just dying out because this is not yet another we went to the capitol building everyone was dead we went mm -hmm. to um what was the other place I don't know. There's a bunch of places where the fireflies were dead. We're finding their uh, dog tags everywhere as a form of collectible. Oh, yeah, Very yeah. smart storytelling that these dog tags belong to people, so they're all dead. Mm -hmm. So like they're all dying. So that tells you there like was, right. Um, there is one. There's a firefly guy at right when you get Ellie, right at the very beginning, when uh, right before you start leave. Uh, right next to the newspaper thing, there's a dead body. That's where you get your first firefly pendant from. Yeah, the, for the mission. And then I think they ask, and then I think Ellie asks about it or something. One of my favorite ones is actually, and I missed this again, had to get it in my collectible run. The bloater in the university, when you kill him, he has mm -hmm. a pendant on him. And I was like, that yep. is cool. So that tells yep. us that like, like hell of a long time ago been, that this yep. guy got, got infected and it's just been here and slowly became mm -hmm. a bloater um, over yep. time. Which means, like, I wonder how, how long the fireflies have been around, like, since day one, or like, you know, like, bloaters are like some of the earliest infected, is what they say. No, no, no. And, oh, yeah. sorry, I missed that. Yeah. Did I miss what well, you were saying? saying? Like, well, I'm saying like, no, yeah, the bloaters are the earliest ones, but like, for it being a firefly, uh, how long have the firefly been around since like day one of the outbreak, since good outbreak point. day, or like, you know. That's a good point. They, could, they they did say stages. I don't remember how long it had to be for a bloater. But if you remember, they had the the stages on a piece of paper. I think early in the mm -hmm. game, it, stage one was um, runners. Stage two are stalkers. Stage three are clickers, and stage four is bloaters. But okay, I don't remember the time frames for bloaters because I think it was like I think it was like two months for a stalker. Clickers are years, I think. And then bloaters, I think, is like almost like near day one or or so. not no, because in part not not to spoil ten to fifteen years. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. Bloaters so have been infected for extremely long time. It takes about ten to fifteen years to become a bloater. Okay. Wow. So that tells um, you that tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, because a clicker say the clicker can stay at this stage for about several years, meaning there will be likely even more clickers. And so then two bloaters. to seven years. Because oh. when you get to when you were with, I think. I think it was with Bill. Bill, whenever you go to the high, the high school, yeah, uh, yeah. There's one that that one bloater that's in the closet. Yes, and it's just it was just locked in there. That's forever. a good point. And I, was, yeah. and I was like, well, who locked him in there? Was he already an infected when he got in there, or was it somebody? Was it did they just get turned and then they just pushed him in they there? They pushed him in there. there. You know, that's how I would see. Yeah, yeah, I mean, mid, mid, yeah. Near the beginning, someone so like locks that, him in there, and he became that a blood. That means that infected that that zombie or whatever it is is just sitting there, 10, 15 years, just sitting there. Yep. Yep. And then, then they heard something. They're like, finally, the door yeah, can open. Finally, I can eat something. <laughs> yeah, because I started, I looking, I started looking around, and I was like, that there's like all the cordyceps everywhere in that room. Everywhere. It was gross. Yeah. I was like, "Can I even walk it?" I was scared. I, I walked in. I was like, "Am I gonna die?" Because it, I, you assume there's spores, but that's like the one in time in the game where you're like, "I guess it's fine because there aren't spores mm -hmm. in the air." But it definitely doesn't look like I should be walking around there. Oh wow! Um, for clickers, that's this third stage. It takes roughly a year. So okay, so a year so, of infection. So so so, so the clickers can stay can stay clickers for when they hit ten years. That's when it becomes a bloater. That's, it's that's interesting. So the majority of the people that we kill are recently infected, which I never, I guess, really thought about. But everyone that we're killing, because the majority of the people the yeah. infected are uh, runners. Yeah. So like that mm -hmm. means everyone's like less than a year old, or could be, you know, a little bit more. Yeah. Interesting. I never thought about that. That's a good. That's good. That's a good way of looking at the game. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh yeah. Of course, we end this chapter with him. Falling on a piece of rhubarb sticking out of the ground, Oof. and it looks fucking awful. Like just picturing falling like, all of your weight straight through a rhubarb, and it clearly is like, it looks like it's like somewhere where your kidney or your, that, your yeah liver kidney is like right around here. List so like well, well, the worst part to me was 
I love how fast he was like, I, I you gotta help me up. And like he's like he's like pushing his like stuff up so yeah. his body like can like move up and around the mm-hmm. it's so awful. So awful. It's probably rusty. Like he's done it before. He's like, you need to take me off of this thing. Oh god, it's so bad. Yeah. And, and then he's, he's just like walking slowly and he's like, you like can you walk? He's like, Yeah, I'm fine, just keep going. Yeah, he's like, we gotta get the fuck out of here, and you're like capping people while you're while you're like bleeding out. Yep. Um. Uh, and they keep it very ambiguous. Of course, me and I played it. We knew he lived, but it, they they keep it pretty held under wraps. He's alive. Mm-hmm. And of course, the next thing we hit winter, and Ellie's hunting. And you don't see mm-hmm. Joel for a while until you, until she makes it back and like has food. So you don't know if he's alive or not. But I don't know if you did this, Alex. But as soon as you start that chapter. You get you, if you open up your bag, you have Ellie's collectibles. So you have mm-hmm. Riley's fire five pendant. There's a few other things, but I yep. think. And then you have Ellie's mom's nope. So, achievers, if you have not read this, it's very very interesting. You should go and read it. It's the only thing Ellie has of her mother, aside from what Marlene has said, which apparently she doesn't talk too much about. Yeah. Uh, but her her name was Anna, and she kind of infers that like. Because I think they were like best friends or something. Yeah. Well, inf- Anna and Marlene were like really good friends. Mm-hmm. And and it's like inferring that they were friends and, she, and Anna like made Marlene promise she'd keep her safe, mm-hmm. which is why she didn't join the fire. wasn't able to join the fireflies because Marlene said she couldn't because that would get her in harm's way. And then um, what was notable is like she says like she never wanted kids. But apparently as soon as she saw Ellie, she was like that all that like left. And, and, I, and I wanted you. And and I'm very curious it's just- it's kind of the same symbolism of what's happening here. Yeah, it is. With, That's true. With Joe and Ellie. Joe yeah. doesn't want nothing to do with this kid. And towards mm-hmm. the end of the game. I don't know if. It's implied that Anna's dead. And I'm curious. This is complete yes. fan theory between you and I. Because I don't think at any point does anyone say Anna is dead. I think it's just you're supposed to infer it. But do you think the reason Ellie is immune is that Anna got bit while she was pregnant? Possibly, yes. But Anna died, yeah, died, yeah, she, because Anna died just after giving birth, so she died for, I think, I'm assuming from childbirth. Or something else. Because, like, you still don't really know, right? So, I was curious because I'm reminded of, funny enough, the pandemic we just went through. If, the mother developed COVID that gave the baby antibodies to fight COVID. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking like when it happened and I was like, well, did Anna get like infected while she was pregnant and it gave Ellie the ability to fight off the, or at least neutralize it. Um, I don't know, but I, that's, that's kind of how I inferred like maybe, right at around eight or nine months she gets bitten and like she now has to like force this baby out or 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 maybe she goes into labor like with the added stress of being bit yeah, and then like the little bit that had died a couple of hours after ellie was born oh, okay i missed i missed when it was like fully confirmed that she had died i i must be stupid um but that's yeah, just how i took after, it i was curious what you thought about two hours after birth she after that she read her letter during this time right before she died Oh, okay, interesting. So, which means the mother knew she was dying. Yes, when she was writing the letter, yeah, she knew she was dying. Yeah, so, so, so that means, yeah, you might be right. She was probably bitten. She gave birth. She was probably. I don't think anybody knew she was bitten. Oh, interesting. Because, because they wouldn't have that would give Ellie live. Yeah, that would give Marlene an idea though too. So that I feel like that is true because Marlene seems to have been there. Yeah, because Mar- so, I'm assuming Anna's like, I'm pregnant. I'm about to give birth. She must have. She must have gotten bit. She gave. She uh, she didn't tell anybody. She gave birth to Ellie, and she baby's fine. And then she dies. She was like, and then Marlene. She probably or tells probably Marlene, tells Marlene to kill her or something. I got bit. I'm about to die. Please watch over Ellie. And she does the letter. She dies, and that's what. The oh, and the, it's the mother's switchblade too. Was in the bag too. The switchblade, which is the switchblade blade. that she has. That yeah, I, yes, I forgot sorry. about that. Good point. Yep. Um. Yeah. So that was sense. just that was just a theory I I I had because I was reminded of, funny enough, the pandemic we just went through. Mm-hmm. Um. 
um, back to Lakeside Resort. This is the start of winter. On the hunt mm. is what the chapter is called. Um, yep. Nothing notable here at the beginning. We're hunting this deer. We find uh, we follow the deer to a nearby, I guess, scouting. I guess he was scouting. I don't know what uh, David is. His name was doing around this point with someone else. Mm. But uh, voiced by Nolan North. Of course, we can't have a game without Nolan North in it. So he's here. Uh, incredible acting as as always from Nolan. Um, yep. Uh, what was your first impressions of David? Because the, from from moment zero, something about his eyes I was never with. He always freaked me out. He's clearly uh, supposed to be creepy, I guess, because just the way his face is to me, I was like, this dude looks like a fucking creep. Yeah, I think his. Yeah, no, he's a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if from what they're doing, that's why they look like that. Maybe because he looks gray and weird. He just looks like a fucking weirdo. Like this is the best way I could put it. Um, he he's also clearly incredibly religious. I I don't know. It, it's unclear what they're religious to. Maybe it's hinting at something in part two. I won't spoil it here. Maybe it's them, but he's he's religious. He's like make he's like praying like while the infected are like him and Ellie are fighting and stuff. He's like thanking God and something. So assumably it's it's Christian, but uh, again never told. Um, yeah. another part where I watched with director commentary, I, I wasn't able to watch all the cutscenes, but I watched this one. Um, he told Nolan, uh, Neil Druckmann when he was directing him, he said. You're playing as David. He um uh and he told him the background that we'll never see to help him act it out. And apparently one of the things he told him is that he is uh uh he runs kind of a cult sort of like with their thing that they do. But we're never told that. So apparently Nolan like was able to use that in his acting. I think it it comes across very well. Um and I do love when they unveil or I guess David unveils that like the reason they're out there is like, yeah, no, we heard, we had reports from our men that a bunch of our men died and it was due to this crazy man and a little girl. And he just looks at her and Ellie's like, fuck. And just grabs a bow and is like a uh, step away and stuff. And they, and he, uh, brings the, uh, penicillin. Yeah. It was penicillin that she mm -hmm. said and got two bottles, took it back to Joel and then clearly David was like, uh, well, you're not going to be gone for long. And he immediately sends a search party. And I know I keep harping on this, but another awesome example of storytelling without screaming at us is like, while they're looking for Ellie, they're like, hey, look, you know, look for her. And like one of the things they say is like, we need to find her. Uh, David said, take her in alive. And another guy says, fuck that. He ki she killed. They like she's responsible for like, like a bunch of my friends dying. I'm killing her. And they're like, but David said, and he's like, fuck David. I don't care. And it, and again, it's like cool that like you're hearing like descendant I'm among the ranks and stuff. Too. They're clearly upset. They yeah. see Ellie and half of them are shooting at her. The other half are trying to grab her. So like you can, you can tell some people are listening. Some people are like, no, I'm killing her. Um, yep. uh, and then uh, we get to like her, you know, sing around. And then, you know, eventually David captures her and it's very, very unsettling scene. It follows here. Mm -hmm. um incredibly unsettling with david so they're literally chopping up a body as uh as with, uh sitting there uh she wakes up and he gives her food and she's like is there a is there a side of human in there and he's like you yeah, know it's just deer so she eats it and stuff and he's fucking weirdo he's like i'm trying to talk everyone into not killing you and she has her hands on the bar and he grabs it and he's like, cause you're special. And he's clearly a fucking creep and is like trying to feel mm -hmm. out if she wants to bang him. And yeah, my, and the best out. response is like Ellie, like pretends to be into it and then just breaks his fucking finger. Mm -hmm. And it's like, go fuck yourself. And, uh, and she ends it such a perfect way of like, he's like, what am I supposed to tell the others? And she goes, Ellie, like, he's like, what? It's like Ellie. When they ask who broke your fucking finger, you could say it was Ellie. I was like, damn, she's mm -hmm. she's so cool. And then he, of course, threatens her. He's like, what'd you say, little bitty pieces? And then just walks away like, oh, God, such a great scene. What did you think of David mm -hmm. overall? But Because we're about to viciously murder his face, so. Um, he's, he, I, hmm. they made that character very compelling. Hmm. Like, like, it's just like, oof, like, what has he gone through or what has he gone through to make him be this way? 
Like, yep. um, like you would think, I mean, has he always been a cannibal? Has he yeah. always been like this? Like what made him go over the edge? Is it because it's winter maybe? And he's like, we had, you know, maybe like, maybe a couple winters ago they were like fuck it we gotta start eating people and now and then they, they got like yeah. okay with it so like now they're just eating fucking people like whenever yeah i don't know but uh let's see oh uh my favorite scene is coming up um so joel wakes up begins looking for ellie oh quick ahead. quick thing uh joel's getting waking up if you he's in a basement of some house right if when you play Left Behind, which we'll talk about Left Behind. You see Ellie has him in a mall and that whole thing, you know. Yeah. So you, so Ellie has moved him from a mall on a horse, everything, all the way to this house. I'm like, this chick is, has been dedicated to carry him. Yep. And moving him. Ellie is very good at what she was doing. Like, she's yeah. very smart. She was, able, she was able to... Uh, pick up everything she was taught like from military wow. the little bit that joel taught her i'm sure marlene taught her some things too like of course riley i'm sure, I'm sure joel's no no uh easy man to carry either i'm sure he's probably like two two ten yeah she needed a fucking horse <laughs> so yeah mm -hmm. yeah um and i remember when the game came out originally people had issues with this because uh the main gripe was like how did ellie move joel yeah, and I guess no one thought about the horse because that was my first thing. Even as a kid, no offense to the to commentators at the time, I was like, she had a horse, so like she probably well, tied yeah, him to the just, horse. Well, to well, to do you think he was dragged or do you think she she actually was able to like put like tie him up and pull him over to the horse? I think that's what I would have done if I was little. I would have tied like a rope over the horse, tied it on him, and then kind of like pulley it and pull him until he's over there and trying to kind of like force him on the horse. Maybe, but you're a 14 year old girl. I don't, I don't think you're able to, but it, it, I'm sure there was some finagling. She was able to work something out yeah. and, and be able and to transport she, him. She's going to manhandle like Luisa from Kanto and just throw her. <laughs> it's just, as a scene with Ellie just has Joel on his back. Um, he, she's just riding the horse like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, 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 Joel wakes up. Uh, and my favorite scene is about to happen. He wakes up goes mm. he literally the mo i love it the moment he wakes up it tells you that he has fallen for ellie of course not in a weird mm -hmm. way as as a, yeah, a very as family a love fatherly of yeah. uh, and he immediately says ellie just as soon as he wakes up he's like where's ellie and and he says ellie walks around hears people talking and he goes all right uh here here's little girl that they're still looking for joel although they don't know where he is so mm -hmm. you go start capping fools and then you grab mm -hmm. two of them and you take them away. I think at this point it cuts back to Ellie. She's able to uh, pull David in a thinking she's infected. F fucking brilliant, by the way. Oh, yeah. Bites yeah. David's finger. They go to fucking chop her head off. And she goes, you're infected. I'm infected. So you're infected now. And, and he goes like, I'll entertain her. Cuts the thing. Lifts up her thing to see it. And, and it, it looks like a bite. It's, it still looks like a bite, even though it's probably three months old now. Probably more than that now. And... Uh, David doesn't buy it, but um, oh, it looks like Alex had to. Uh, uh, we lost Alex's computer signal. He probably had to restart the score or something. But it looks like he's trying to buy it. Um, go. oh, there we go. It looks like we got you back. I think that was me. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's still it's still messing up a little bit. Mm hmm. Looks like it. I don't know. Something uh, we'll probably fix here in a second. But back to what we were talking about. Um, yeah, it's weird. You're just a great box of Discord. I don't know what's what's going on, but. Um, when David, um, well, yeah, when she frees herself from David, he goes to uh, Chucha. I love that, that she doesn't really talk them out of it. The other guy is like kind of freaked out. He's like, she definitely looks infected. And, and David's just like, no, it's fine. And, and she just grabs the cleaver and just yoinks that other dude, just right in his neck, just like bang, like right, right in like his, uh, neck, almost cutting his head off and, and kills the guy and she's able to run away. Then we go to my favorite scene with Joel. It's very short, but it's him just you can you you see Joel as he has been in like in the past 20 years, just ruthless. He has these two people like uh basically wrapped up. He has one guy and he's like, "All right, you're going to show me where you're going after like beating the hell out of these people." He puts a knife in his knee, starts twisting it, grabs a map, says, "You need to tell me where it is." Puts the knife, he writes it. Joel then snaps his neck, <laughs> walks over to the other guy and goes like, what the fuck, man? Like, 
uh, he told you. He told yeah, he told you, and he's like, "I'm not telling you shit now." And he goes, "Don't worry, I believe him." And then beats him with yep. a lead pipe. <laughs> like, holy shit, mm-hmm. man! Um, that's just one of my I'm still messing up a little bit, so I'm trying my best to see. No, it's fine. It, it says I'm on. It's fine. If you need to, you can also restart Discord. I can vamp while you're while you need to. I I can't again. I can't. I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's me. But we have no way of knowing if if you restart, yeah. nothing happens. I'll restart after. But um, let's see. Uh, where was I? Oh, and yeah, you finish that up. We go to Ellie. Um, uh, sneaking around. This is one of the t- most tense scenes, in my opinion, in the whole game, with the boss fight with David. So we have the David boss fight. We we have to sneak around the first time and and avoid detection. Very smartly that there's like broken glass around. So like if you step on it, like David knows like where you are. I love that touch. Um, which makes when you throw the beer glass and it breaks like a little more believable too. Uh, and you're able to beat him. Some one of the scariest parts is is his second phase. I guess is what you'd call him. Um, he takes out a machete and just starts running at you, and it's terrifying. Um, absolutely terrifying uh, to see that. Uh, and I'm not really sure whose idea that was, but what like the moment he just takes out a machete and just starts running around the environment is absolutely scary. Like I was very, very like I like and there was a couple times where I just went like you know you do the, like the little like Ugh! like like as like uh David's getting closer and closer to you it's it's Jesus like it's not I'm not a fan of that one. It's very scary. But um what else uh what else? Uh, yeah, but that's that's basically it for the David boss fight. I liked the the added touch of the boss fight. It didn't feel too gamey, which was very that's very easy to do when you have like a classic boss fight. It just doesn't really feel right in the long games. I feel like they were able to get it down kind of nice with um uh, uh oh Alex is uh, it wasn't it says it's not letting him connect now. Very interesting. Sorry, uh, Chiefers, we're having just issues with Discord. Oh, it looks like my Discord probably. I think discord crashed um while that loads uh what, what was i oh it's easy to mess up a boss fight it's also easy to make it very video gamey i brought up the flamethrower uh previously as like um something oh that's why my internet is out interesting hopefully i'm not having an internet outage because that will suck um anyways it's easy for um, a boss fight to feel too boss fighty you know what i mean like or sorry, too gamey. Like that's that's one of the worst things that you can have, right? In this beautiful game where it's like meshing gaming with like this incredibly immersive story, and I don't know where you have this boss fight. And I felt like it melded it very well, although it still could have used it without it. I, there was probably not a super satisfying way to kill the David character, so I think the best way of doing that is have this kind of climactic boss fight and see if you can. Um, murder him in this time frame uh basically it looks like my internet's out achievers i will be right back i'm going to see if i can restart my internet so right back with you we're back sorry about that um we had a time jump of our own i guess in (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah i'm not because i'm dirty but um this is we had we had like a what an eight hour time jump not not that much maybe but yes. it's not dark uh i, I work. <laughs> yeah yeah you worked and things so i had um uh internet out I, I told the achievers that's i thought that's what it was and then yeah for sure i, I it was out for like hours so pretty rare actually mm-hmm. I'll, it's not gonna wood it it not that has not happened before so like dude i was waiting for it because i was like all i see is my on mine i'm like clear and then all i see is you going this like and then loading mm-hmm. and i'm like oh, all right yep i see either I, I, he I, I, either he fucking lied to me that it wasn't him <laughs> or something's wrong it took me forever for the internet to say it was out like in the right corner yeah. where it says you know you're it's plugged happened. in and all that i'm like it still says that internet, so it's not me and then eventually it was like nope you're gone so um mm-hmm. anyways back to of course last was part one i was um alex because you had out uh, a little bit before I finished the point. I brought up um, David specifically the boss fight where we're kind of ending mm. our our chapter with uh, the boss fight with David and specifically with the David boss fight I found it interesting that in this game Last of Us Part 1 where it's almost blending reality not, eh, reality's not a good way of putting it it's bending like what a game can be 
to mm-hmm. like just a full-on experience and very immersive i thought it was both very brave and also very risky to kind of put a very gamey boss well, fight attempt and i think they nailed it i don't even well i don't even see it as a game thing i see it as um you just i mean like you just met the uh, this cannibal yeah. that wants to potentially like do things to you ellie yeah yeah so now you're in the situation where you escaped and you f- and he you're in the same room trapped in the room with him what do you do so like in my mind i'm like oh in this situation you know you gotta hide from him you try to you know you're pretty much in this you're like you know what if you were in ellie's situation this is what could happen you know you try yeah. to hide from him you probably could try to beat him up you know so i think that's why they would put the boss fight because of they could relate to be like oh you know th- what if if this would happen like it would be feel like a boss it fight. would feel like a, I, I i agree and also i do like um as just kind of like a, a point with ellie when you take control of ellie in the game i like that one you can't really kill people stealthily because like she has mm-hmm. to put everything in her to kill someone like she has to jump yeah, on them she's and, so like, small. She's like, and like yeah, she has to like stab them yeah. and they're like screaming bloody murder because of course they're getting stabbed so i kind of like that she's not like a stealth assassin she still has to like if she kills someone it has to be very deliberate but also mm-hmm. i like how kind of helpless you are w- without a gun um, I had forgot mm-hmm. that. So when I went to melee someone, you just kind of hit them with the switchblade, and they don't. Nothing happens really. Like no, they kind of just. Yeah. I forgot that that, that like, you just yeah. slice them, and they're like, and they like punch you. I'm like, oh no, I gotta run. So I went to grab a bottle or a brick, and I'm like, eh, yeah, yeah, away. yeah. The amount of times I will go to melee just reflectively, uh, reflexively, and, and and nothing happens, and I go, mm-hmm. oh no, and then they grab you, and you have to like mash out. You, to... You're fucking silly. They're like, <laughs> that was a slap. Yeah. So. Um, I, but really, that that's kind of how I had finished kind of my point before we had left. So I really that's all I have for both the hunt and cabin resort and basically the mm. uh, the winter season that we found in this game. Was there anything you wanted to bring up before we had moved on to um, pretty much the end of the game after this? Do I mean, like well towards the ending of that boss fight. Like she just goes to town on him. Like you yeah. know she was like yeah. you know she almost died. So she was like whamming at him and then like joel comes out of nowhere and stops her and you're like it's me it's me and i feel like that's where the father daughter bond kind of started yeah or at least cements or like kind of like you know I, I feel like that's where joel is like you know this kid has just gone through some shit mm. you know it's like it's me it's me it's relax relax you know i mm. like seeing like i think he, instead of He's starting to become, he's like, oh, I'm her guardian, not her father. And then, like, look, you can tell that it, it starts to progress. Yeah, I think this is definitely the turning point. I, I feel like it, it already kind of was with, um, for sure, with, um, when we left Tommy's. But I feel like this even, yeah. this even cemented it more. Where it, and I think, again, I, I want to bring up when he wakes up, the first thing he says is Ellie before saying anything mm-hmm. else. I think that was also a point where, like, yeah, you clearly have developed this daughter love for uh mm-hmm. ellie yeah. um but and yeah an incredibly brutal scene with her basically chopping up his head into little yeah, bits I, I, yeah I, honestly i love the imagery to where like oh, they don't show anything nope all they show is the the, the blade just covered in blood and then yeah. they show i'm like i'm like that that wasn't that's a nice touch yeah i i and and in a game where brutality is kind of what they sh- i mean they're pretty open with how brutal it is that's the kind of one like, scene where they hold back was it, but yeah but you know how bad it is because you just saw yeah. like a machete go to town on this dude's head like mm-hmm. eight to ten hits yeah. um all right we're leaving winter we're going into spring this is the bus depot and then the chapter highway escape an underground tunnel um so we brought this up kind of in the beginning where this we start this chapter with ellie very distant clearly bothered i know you mentioned uh things prior i agree but i think it's a mixture of that everything she's been through and the fact that she might also lose joel on top of all that yeah um but to skip ahead because we kind of covered what i wanted to mostly cover in this one i wanted to get we covered the giraffe scene of course touching um uh funny enough i was uh doing um I was using PSN trophies to get the collectibles that I had missed. Mm-hmm. And when we got to the giraffe one, he he had mentioned like this uh possibly being the most um 
what was his words? I apologize if I mix your mix your words, Brian, but I'm pretty sure he said this might be the most famous collectible in video game history. And he, I might have to agree that it is such an iconic image, just the giraffe from Last of Us Part One, mm -hmm. that I find that yeah, it might tr transcend like almost every other game, minus maybe you know something like Mario or something like that. But I think I think it's up there with definitely like that is probably a very iconic um video game thing that has happened probably in the last mm -hmm. 10 years no yeah for sure i mean like every time you like see that you're like oh i know what this is yes it's so nice and i love how for a little bit ellie got to be a kid for that little no, for sure. yeah. like you like 10 so minutes because you know she, she didn't she's, no, she's never been to the zoo yeah not, that's not a thing anymore so it's seeing that it's probably like you know it's it's like seeing your child like being in awe for the first time it's yeah touching yeah, and um, I love the. Uh, uh, I also got to play this on my TV, the OLED, and that mm -hmm. the scene where you get to sit there with Ellie and just kind of watch the giraffes move around. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wow, Dude, I it was. OLED. I still have the old my old 4K TV, but that still looked it, like yeah. great. I took the screenshot, and you know how on PS5 you can make like your profile background. That's what that's what my background is. Oh, that's a good one. Scene. That's a good yep. one. That's a good idea. Um, yep. the last kind of thing, actually, there's two more things I want to touch before we move on to, of course, the last chapter and then to the epilogue. Um, right after the draft scene, Ellie walks off and just kind of says like she wants her immunity to mean something. I thought that was very touching and very mature for a 14 year old to basically go like, Hey, like, mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to just be immune. I want it to mean something. And I think yeah. we're starting to culminate in both of both Ellie and Joe kind of having survival's guilt, I think, in multiple yep. ways. And I think that's what's culminating here, where you kind of look at Joel, he has this survivor's guilt where his daughter, of course, died in his arms at the beginning of the game 20 years mm -hmm. prior. And Ellie finding out and left behind, and we can cover that in a little bit, also having this kind of survivor's guilt where the whole plan was to die uh, with her best friend later on, of course. Yeah girlfriend or significant other they didn't really get far but the plan was to go and be mad with each other and it just never happened and i imagine that's also kind of the reason she wants to see this thing through is she didn't get to leave with riley she got to stay yeah. alive while riley went of course uh, yeah, there infected was, there was i can't remember when they said it and i and um i can't remember she talked she talks I think she talks to Joel and she's like, you know, she is, she's, she mentions, you know, she had a best friend and they both got bit and she said she died or they were, they, they both got, they both like were dying or whatever. And she still, she was still waiting for her turn. Yeah. Yeah. She had died and she just kind of stayed and it's just waited. Yeah. And she Nothing was like, happened. I'm still waiting for my turn. Yeah. Like, that's why I was like, I was like, damn. Yeah. Very, pretty rough to hear from again, a 14 year old. Yeah. Um. Going to again one of my favorite levels. I know I keep saying that, but I love this level where you have to go underground. Mm -hmm. But it's so tense because there's so many. Oh my infected. god, dude! There's so many infected. Here. So much. Yeah, and, and especially when you got to go underwater. It's flooded, and, gotta, and it's always crazy because you know, Ellie can't swim. Yeah. And uh, I mean, for a little bit, eh, it's not a spoiler type of thing, but like you, you know um that's not the case in the second one but like with this one you're like oh i want the hell you know that that changes if you haven't played the second one mm -hmm. yeah and but, um, i i if i can also quickly critique the game that one of the things and this isn't by any means a unique uh idea but um one of the downsides of the game i think is ellie can't swim and you do have to like get these puzzles where like you go get the palette you bring it back palette, she jumps yeah. on it and and it kind of is that same puzzle I, in quotes not really even a puzzle but you do that like kind of i want to say off the top of my head five to six times in the game and after a while i was just like we could have thought of a different way of doing this it didn't have to be a palette every single time but again yeah it's a very small critique i have in an otherwise almost perfect experience yeah um but uh, i do like that they didn't even have to put this in here this is kind of like a a very tense scene we think ellie dies at the end or at least she drowned and mm -hmm. he's trying to um, resuscitate, resuscitate, or give her CPR and things. And 
She's trying. He's trying, and I love that the fireflies find him, and he's like, "Put your hands," but he doesn't stop. So he, at no point yeah, does he like, stop. She, he's like, "She can't she's, breathe." She's not breathing, and it just cuts there after he gets knocked out. And he, at no uh, point yeah. grabs a gun or anything. Like he's f- so focused on on trying yeah, to save so Ellie. On her, and that's when you that that's the moment where he became a father. Yeah, for sure. For her. Like, yeah, he doesn't. He, he oh, could not like, care less what's going on around yeah, him. He did not give a fuck that he was being aimed at a gun. At. He was just trying to save her. Yep. Very touching. Um, and I do. I very much like that level. I, I like how uh, it's very kind of scary. As soon as you get in the bus and it falls, Ellie tries to save you, but Joel mm-hmm. at the same time's like, go, like, like go. I, I, I'll try and fix it, but she's like trying to help, yeah. and it, she does help. But then she falls. It, like, it's very, very, yep. very, very well paced scene. I is on mm-hmm. the edge of my seat. Um, before we get to the last one, any any last thoughts on this? Uh, this last the uh, final kind of final journey that we have with Ellie, uh, Ellie and Joel. This basically the kind of last level that we have that with them together, sort of. Um, I mean, it's it, it's kind of like it's at this point, you're like you don't want it to end, but you know you're reaching the finish line, so it's one of those things you're like, oh no, I know it's about to end, but I don't want yeah. it to. Yeah, yeah same here. I, it, it's a it, it's respectively length, I think. Like they don't overstay their welcome with this game. Mm-hmm. All right, the Firefly Lab, and it's simply named the Hospital. That's all I'd say. Mm-hmm. Um, we open with Joel waking up. He's <laughs> very Joel and goes like, "What the fuck am I?" And Marlene's there like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, relax, <laughs> don't freak <laughs> out." Um, and then she immediately tells him the worst thing you could tell him, which she doesn't actually, of course, know the love that they've developed kind of with each other. Yeah, she just exactly. is, she's just surprised he's even there. She's like, what are oh, you yeah. doing here? She's like, I'm surprised y'all made it all this way. And I've lost ha- half of my people doing that journey. Yeah. Yeah. She lost the majority of her people. I do like throughout this level, you find collectibles that she has left mm-hmm. and she's talking like how she came back and how she's looked down upon as like a failure now, because like she lost so many people uh, and, and how mm-hmm. she's like, basically like at the end of a rope in the fireflies and then once they found ellie that kind of sparked hope again uh and of course they didn't know what the fuck was about to happen to them but uh and then of course right after that scene uh marlene goes um uh he joe asks where's ellie and marlene of course says she's getting prepped for surgery we um we found that the cordyceps uh, we need to get the cordyceps spores out of her, or growth, I guess is what you'd call it, not really a spore yeah. anymore. But they have to get it out of her body to reverse engineer a, a cure. Mm-hmm. And Joe immediately says, the cordyceps go to your brain. And Marlene just kind of nods. And and yep. he he knows, like, he's like, uh, what does he say? He says, get her out. Or, or he basically says, like, no. Like, you, you're going to bring her to me. And Marlene goes, we have we have to do this and before we get of course we're getting very very close to uh joel um joel's decision we'll get to that in a second but before we do that my main gripe with this entire situation with the fireflies Mm -hmm. is at no point they ask ellie so like you can say how morally right you are or whatever, but at no, no point like, did you ask for the consent from the person that you have to do this to. Yeah, like literally, you could you could have been like, "Hey, are you you are willing to do this?" I was mean, like, like they don't care. They didn't care for her. They, they just wanted the the cure. Yeah. So they didn't even they didn't even bring up like that. They didn't even seem like they thought about it. It looks yeah. like it's been maybe. Uh, let's say it's been thirty minutes since they've been there. Maybe. So, like, they found out, they probably did x-rays, and then immediately went to surgery. By the way, I do love, excuse me, I do love how clean everything is. This is kind of the only place that we've been in the Mm -hmm. game that I can think of that is incredibly clean and, like, well-kept. Yeah. Like, there's lights that work, there's generators everywhere. They have an x-ray machine, which is like, what the, how the hell did you get that to work for 20 years? But they have it. I mean, as long as they have those generators, they, I mean, the electricity works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, so we've delayed it long enough, I think, Alex. Um, we get to 
the decision. Of course, not our decision, but it's Joel's decision. A very contentious decision, I think, that has happened throughout the game. Um, sorry, that's happened since the game has come out, is Joel's decision to kill everyone to save Ellie. So basically, to stop the cure from happening, he needs to viciously murder everyone in this hospital and save Ellie. I think your point of perspective, especially since you had played this prior to having children, is much more valuable than mine. So I want to hear you first. Yeah, has your perspective changed at all since you first played it, or has it stayed the same, but you feel more strongly about something? I just want to hear, if, have you developed at all a, uh interest in Joel's decision here? So when I first played the game, I didn't have any children, but I under, I like... I, I understood, it, but at the time, I'm like, mm, you know, that was a little overboard, bro. Like, you know, you, he like, does you kill a did, lot of people. You, you killed, you, you literally just wiped out the whole hospital to save the girl that you just met a year ago. I mean, I get it. You developed, you know, you know, she's your partner now. I, I mean, she, I get it. So and at, at the time, I was like, okay, I mean, I, I get it, but that was a bit rough. Now, <laughs> I'd do the same thing. I would. I would have. I almost. Ex I kind of expected that reaction, right? Yeah, yeah. I have, yeah. No. If and it's hard because people will be like, "Well, he only knew her for like a year." Mm. That time doesn't change. It doesn't matter when it comes to what you've been through together. Like they literally saved each other's lives. Like the amount of uh, the amount of uh, like the uh, dedication that Ellie had for you know keeping him alive her almost like dying or her getting eaten or whatever and then joel you know joel being there at the end their bond has been pretty much father and daughter now and it's just like no nah, you can't that's one thing that you can never break like at the i don't know at some point it's like I, at the beginning i always i was like i wonder if maybe he sees a little bit of sarah and ellie i have a something to bring up i want to see if i'm reading too much into this and i want you to tell me okay. if, if you think i am or not joel has almost a mirrored situation in this part that we found him in the beginning of the game and how we end the game in the beginning of the game he is trying to save sarah and he goes towards a uh i guess a federal agent whoever this is federal i guess it's federal back then too i don't know it was, it was a um, military so he was a soldier yeah so let's just say a military soldier looks for help and for and he can't do anything but watch as he basically attempts to be uh murdered both mm -hmm. with his daughter and him while he's holding his daughter in his hands and it's almost mirrored in this situation as well where he is now point where is he going to let what happened 20 years ago happen again through inaction and i think that is what is the main driver Behind oh, Joel, sure. where yeah. he had this lost prior and it witnessed in front of him, and now it is happening again, mm -hmm. and he is going to refuse for that to happen once again. And I oh, think, for sure. I think it's clear that Joel made a a very decisive decision. It didn't even look like he even thought well, he, of, thought about it. He was just is, like, "No, nah, it's not going to happen. We're killing." It's not that he even made a bad decision. It's that he got to decide this time. The first time. He didn't get to decide. He, he the, the 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 soldier literally just straight up and shot both of them and killed an innocent little girl. Mm -hmm. Like literally, they, even even on the radio at the beginning, the guy was like, "But sir, you know he he has a kid. Who's go, who's gonna fucking know that he like he let some girl walk away? Like really? Yeah, Come yeah, on, bro. Yeah, real weird. Um, like, like yeah. So like I think it's like now that he was like, I actually have the chance to save her and I couldn't save Sarah. I, like, if anything, I feel like he would be like, this is for Sarah. Like, yeah. I feel like if anything, I've got to keep her alive. Yeah. To something I wanted to bring up too, if I'm remembering correctly, and I'm pretty sure I watched this too, or listened to it back in 2014 when I played and listened to a spoiler cast for the game. I want to say Neil Druckmann was on podcast beyond like way back in 2013 when the game had launched. Or at least mm. a, a few to a few months after launch, and he said that because uh, it was kind of a debate whether the cure would even be made if they stole this cordyceps out of her, and he basically went on to confirm that yes, 
a cure would have been made if Ellie had died. So apparently that is hundred percent. Now, of course, Joel doesn't know this information, but I just thought it was important to tell the achievers so that it, apparently. So now, you need I was gonna say yes, a cure would have been made. Now, would it have worked? So yeah, good point. I I I think what's even more important is like I mean, like you, there's only so much cordyceps you could take out of that Im immune brain or whatever. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you know, like let's say you only have enough. To make to do three tests, like way, like if they all fail, now what? Yeah. You just like I thought that was also interesting. Like regardless of if the cure works, vaccines are incredibly complicated. Like I know you could replicate vaccines and things of this nature, but like it's not like you can now distribute it among everyone easily. Yeah. Like there is no yeah. like there's not a fucking Amazon anymore. It's so like oh the the Resident Evil movies at the very the, one of the last ones it was like they they actually had the cure for everything and they spread it airborne so everything just started dying mm, at the end interesting and it was weird. I'm like they had the cure it, like once they like broke it into the airborne it, the cure winded up uh, getting into the air and all the zombies in the the radius just started dying mm, and that was right. like the last, and I was like that's not I was like that's not gonna happen <laughs> yeah it's some sort of a chemical weapon anyways i i just wanted to bring that up i thought it was interesting that just in case you were worried apparently it would have made a cure regardless of i could have taken a chance if uh, yeah also joe doesn't know that it, he probably no. and again even if they make the cure how are they distributing this thing like it's not like they can drive around and just start stabbing people with a needle i mean, needle. So, I like, mean even I even even if they were like if even if they, let's say they make the cure and they tell the military or her or they to do some broadcast and be like, hey, we've made the cure. Half of their fireflies are already dead. I mean, like... And that's all, that also basically starts a war for, like, yeah. whoever hears that is like, well, I'm gonna go get a cure, and they're gonna murder half of them. For the cure. Yeah, so... I think... I think... The... The issue with the cure is also gray, just like the rest of this game is. I don't think this is a black and white situation where like, mm -hmm. oh, Joel is saving Ellie. Therefore, Joel has made a bad decision. I understand the cure is a big deal. But again, there's there's a bunch of bad things also happening while this cure yeah, is being exactly. developed. Like, in quotes. The cure is not going to fix everything in the world. Um, Like those cannibal cannibals are still going to be there. And again, because I'm a sicko, I... I, I, I like when Joel uh, is able to um, uh, the first time he w when he initially goes to run, he like grabs like the short soldier that was going to escort him oh, out. Yeah, he grabs him, yeah. And then like puts the gun and he's like, where is she? And he's like, I don't have time for this. Shoots him. Where is she? Mm -hmm. Shoots him again. And he goes surgery pediatrics and he just kills him and then leaves yeah. him. And I'm like, damn, yeah. like. Like the little bits of the very dark Joel, I don't know why, but I very much like because mm -hmm. the acting from Troy Baker, I think, is just so good. It yeah. it's it sells well, it yeah. so well. Yeah, I mean, even like the twenty years of him, like l like remembering, you know, the loss of his child, I'm, it puts him in a deep in a, in a yeah, yeah. It kind of reminds me of um um I don't I don't know if it's a spoiler but in, in Inf infinity war with ronin mm, okay I I yeah. anything. Nah, it's fine I, okay. I i think everyone knows what you mean by that it, yeah, okay. yeah i i, I get it too like some of his children or sort of speak yeah yeah so um aside from that with this this level is pretty straightforward you save ellie of course you kill the surgeon which is terrible because it's like wow there probably wasn't a lot of them left so we just killed a surgeon um we grab ellie we go to run uh, we end the the chapter with killing Marlene, which I was sh I was I don't know why. After I had killed a bunch of soldiers, my first playthrough, my very first playthrough in 2014, I don't know why. But when he killed Marlene, that was was the most shocking. I'm not really sure why back then, but for some reason, like back, I was like, "Whoa, you, why did you kill her?" And and uh, looking back, I was like, "Well, why did he kill everyone else?" So at this point, like, yeah. and and again, I. They would come I, after her. Is that what he kept saying? He was that, like, when I he comes back, go. he's like, no, like, let me live. And he's like, you'll just come after her. And I, he's not, yep. it, it doesn't even come across as mean to me either. He's just being frank. Yeah. He's like, you'll yeah, he's just like, come yeah, after her. He's going to come back after her. I'm not doing this again. He nope. shot her in the face. So good. So, so, so good. And then drives away. We, of course, get the scene. And I feel like we can kind of wrap up with uh, the game with 
both this and the next thing, the epilogue called Jackson. Um, mm. We can kind of wrap this all up together because it kind of all happens at once. Joel, without hesitation, says uh, yeah, her cure, her immunity was nothing. They apparently had a bunch of other kids. Yeah, uh, they, uh, they had given up because it doesn't do anything. And you could tell Ellie's very sad. Upon thinking, eventually you get to Jackson. They're walking towards Jackson. She's kind of distant. She then asks Joel again, is like, do you pro- swear to me that that's what he meant? And he said, I swear. And then very brilliantly, it just goes to her face, sits on her for a second. Ooh. She just goes, all right. And then fade to black. And two things to note. One, Joel lies to Ellie without hesitation, which I think is very relatable to, I think, most uh, fathers with teenagers, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you've lied before to keep some ruse going. Second, she at least, and she at least seems to, I don't know if it was meant to be this way, but I feel like she knows something is up. Regardless mm-hmm. if she knows how bad it was, I don't know. But yeah. it, I think at least to me, it seems like, it seems like Ellie's just, like, she, mm, she just, she just not not being... trust in Joel though. Like, so they, they chose like, this just a bond. So like, she was like, in her mind, she was like, I feel like something really bad happened, but I'm going to trust you. Mm, I can. Okay. I can see that too. I could see like something probably really bad happened, but I'll trust you right now. And of course we might see some of that come back later, yeah. but that is the last of us part one. Um, we'll, before we do final thoughts, I think because it'll be quick, let's go quickly into left behind. Um, and then we'll kind of round out our conversation after this. Um, okay. Left Behind, of course, starts. Um, I played this right after my first playthrough back in 2014 as well, because it was included, if I remember correctly. So mm-hmm. it was this is a great DLC, though. This is like awesome. I, if you would have described to me this DLC, it would not have sounded exciting. But being able to play as Ellie in a mall with her friend Riley as they're having fun and hanging out while at the same time, Ellie is trying to save Joel's life. Mm-hmm. Very good. I, I like loved this and going back to prison and stuff. Yes. I love this. A couple standouts off the top of my head. I love how nice Riley is. I love that they had this kind of falling out, but they're kind of making good with like their journey together. I love the, um, imagination scene. So like the scene where they go to play the fighting game oh, and yes. she, and and she's like oh it does it's busted and she's like close, your, like, eyes. close your eyes close your eyes and then you just see the, like the lights like kind of like on so her face so good so good so good so touching too i loved doing that it was really fun doing the combos um mm-hmm. i got the uh trophy for that uh, trophy first try for- first try yeah. and got to mm-hmm. brag a little bit i felt really good yep yep, yep. um i love the water scene um, very touching because they're arguing, but then they're like, "Let's make up." Like, we'll let's play with the water guns, and then uh, we'll we'll like I lost, we'll man. talk it. I almost I had to restart. I think I think I um. She was like one hit away from me, and I was like, "Fuck, I gotta restart." I think I lost I like, the no. I think I lost the third one because it was okay. like you get hit once. I yeah, think I it, 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 you get hit once. Yeah, yeah. So I think I lost the third one, so I had to restart, and then I I destroyed yeah. I destroyed her <laughs> like after that. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, that's. It's everything off the top of my head. I, I just I love the banter. I love their relationship. I like just getting to be with Ellie in her early years. How she talks with Riley, the, her banter about the old world. They talk about what they think it used to be. They mm. uh, oh um I love the Easter egg with the Jack and Daxter game in the arcade game. That was really cool. Mm. This is a bunch of stuff. Anything you want to quickly bring up with Left Behind? Um, I so I didn't the part in Left Behind when you do the photo booth. Oh yeah, and you, yeah, yeah. And you, and you do the photo booth at tour at the very end. It's it's like oh, shared a Facebook. Yeah, that and was it's, fun. And they're like, and they're like, what's a Facebook? What's a Facebook? That was very. Cute. And then it, 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 I hit share, and my actual PlayStation was trying to sh- connect to my Facebook to share it, but I didn't have it linked, so I just I was like, fuck it, cancel it. Yeah, I didn't even I try, but it was awesome. Yeah, it was just loading, so it was, but I was like, that was pretty funny. It's fun. And it was like no, and that was like there was it's like no internet, and they're like, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that that's pretty that's good hilarious it's pretty good um yeah that's that's pretty much it of course the the way we end it is a is just beautiful with um 
when they get bit, they they're just pissed. And Riley says, "We have three options. One, we I damn it, I, I lost the first one. Um, the second one uh, is we go mad together, which is an incredible line. I don't know why I love mm-hmm. that line so much. And then the third one, Riley doesn't say, but it's inferred, of course. You know they." Uh, kill each other at least is is how i uh, read it but um that's a touching scene aside from that i don't have too too much to bring up when we play as ellie saving joel just because you know it, it, it's good it's just I, I don't think i have anything to say other than like it's very cool that we you could see ellie was trying to learn i like that you can mm-hmm. like bait the infected to fight people for mm-hmm. you that was really fun yep um yeah but aside I mean, from that, i don't have cool anything that she, she was able to like literally kill all those people by herself like she was like she was like i have to keep him alive so yeah that was really cool <sighs> that's left behind i don't have really anything else to add after that um it's great i i enjoyed it, it it's a beautiful story i think um mm. and it's something that stands by itself you don't even necessarily have to play the other game um although you very much should yeah yeah uh let's wrap it up final thoughts um there's a couple things i wanted to quickly bring up one that has kind of been sitting in my stomach, kind of in the back of my mind while I was playing this game. Do you think this was a wise move for Naughty Dog? Kind of speaking very broad here, but do you think this was resources well spent? Do you think this is something you would have rather them just do something else or make another game or something like that? What what, what did you think? That, that was also a part of the argument, I would say, throughout this game's kind of PR you know, cycle, I, I guess is what you'd say. I think it was a good choice because if it it felt new but or it felt the it felt like similar familiar but it was so new with everything how it uh, it because it felt so uh, similar to part two and i think that's why they were going to do it because when you play if you go back to last of us uh remastered everything just seems totally different it looks it feels like a whole different game so i feel like them making it had that one and then going to part if you go you going to play so imagine if you've never played these games and go into last of us oh. remastered and then go into last of us part two they feel completely different like the like it doesn't like the the you the even their like mocap models or everything it just seems so different so i think i i see why they redid it because they this one feels more of a prequel to part two than the original one does because how similar they are now like the 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 way the the way the graphics look the ui it just feels like when i played this one and i literally jumped into part two to finish the platinum i was like oh it just feels like i'm still playing that game that i'm like it's just a longer game like and i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for me it was a good thing but it just felt like just an even longer game because it was just continuing I think you said a lot of wise things there, and I want to bring up a, a few things that that kind of popped in my brain while you were talking. One, I do think this was a wise investment because I do believe them when uh, Around the Game was announced, they said we wanted to make The Last of Us that we always wanted to make. So mm-hmm. this was all the things they wanted. This is how they wanted it to look. This is how they wanted the, the, yep. the mocap to look like. If you look at part one, te- sorry, if you look at remaster tests and part one tests, those mm-hmm. are completely different people. You might, yeah, I mean, they might as well faces, be. Yeah, the Ellie's face in the original versus now, the whole it's a whole different kid. Yeah, it's it's it, these it are different, so different models. So clearly, this is how they this is the vision that they had for the Last of Us. That's mm-hmm. kind of my main point here. I think they wanted to go back to make these much more through lined experiences, like you said. Because same as you, it's funny that you brought that up. Same as me. I went from doing this Platinum to going straight to Part 2's Platinum, and it does kind of feel that way. It does kind of feel like this is a complete experience that you can kind of, like, start with one and kind of play yeah. through two, and it does kind of feel just like a kind of, kind of like well, an imagine, epic, almost. Of, imagine, of, if you're, it will, imagine if you're watching The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings. You're watching, you know, Lord of the Rings 1, and then, you know, of course, you go to 2, it, you know, it looks kind of it, it, from, very similar, and it's just continuing the story. Now, imagine that movie 10, t- 10 years apart. Yeah. It's, it's a whole cool. It, I feel like it's, it's like you're watching Lord of the Rings, 
or The Hobbit, and then you just go Lord of the Rings. Well, well what about the sequels? It's just, like, it doesn't feel like a sequel. I, 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 like I agree. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it, I think you make a good point that it does, with a lot of games, seem jarring. I do want to quickly bring up, this is something I've actually wanted game developers to do for a while. I, as a kid, of course, not understanding development nearly as much as I do now. I, I'm reminded of Mass Effect 2 specifically. I would. Uh, I remember playing Mass Effect 2. It was like, oh, it would be so cool if they went back to Mass Effect 1 and like updated it kind of like this game. So it kind of like isn't as like different when you play them like together. Yeah. Of course, that's not quite what game development is, and it's not really what they do. But I like that Naughty Dog kind of took a second and went, well, w let's take part one. Of course, back then it was just Last of Us. Let's just take this and let's really make it like the experience we've always wanted to be. And I think you brought up a good point. Let's make them cohesively kind of together. When you play from this, you're not going to be it part one to me. Yeah. And it, it doesn't feel jarring when you're going to part two because the models look the same. It does look like Ellie older. It does look like Joel older. It doesn't look like mm. this different model that was made yep. clearly five years like in the future. And it all looks much prettier. And I do mm. think this is f this is evidence that I think think the next game after whatever they're working on now will be part three of last of us and most likely the last game in the last of yeah. us saga i think i think, I the, think so, that's the reason they kind of did this is because i think the next games that they're going to be working on one i think it's going to be a new ip we already know i think it's going to be a sci-fi game and then the second one i think is going to be part three and it's yeah. going to have this kind of through line They'll all kind yeah. of look like this. You'll be able to play part one, two, and three, regardless of what yep. year it is, because it, like yep. it'll still look great of oh, that the, nature. Uh, the last, the last, the Last of Us trilogy. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's like here play the whole experience, you know, and they all it's it's all one. Con they all look the same. They all look like you know they're all amazing. Like I, like each one is it's is is you know they're all the, very similar and stuff. Uh, I got pretty much la three three last things, and we're gonna leave the achievers after these okay. la three last things. One, this could be quick. Does this rank at all in your top five games of all time? Not top five, but potentially top ten. Just curious. I would probably put this in my top five, but it's been a while since since I've played it. But mm. it's just a spectacular game. It's now. I have a question for you. Oh, please. Would this be higher than part two? Or part, or part one. Mm, good question. It's really hard. That's a really good question, though. I, I was afraid that you would ask. Cause, cause um, I had to ask because now that they've changed it to where now, like, are if are they too similar to where they kind of like can't really go against each other, or are the stories still very different to where like okay, like is it always one better than the other? I think they are different enough to definitely be like I can separate them in my head and yeah. um, compare them. Especially now, with the is, gameplay in two is so different. Now that they're so similar, though, is one better than the other, or are they just so? Are they like now? You are you, you can only do it by story because you can't really be like, oh, this one's better because the gameplay. They're they're so similar now that that was like, okay, which which story arc was better? I probably enjoy part two. I can't go into why, of course. No, for sure. But for I think reasons. I think the story of part two I like a bit better. And yeah. I think literally the only thing I can say that makes it better is they don't have the gaminess as much as this one did. There are two things mm. that were pretty gamey that kind of takes you out of the experience. One, the flamethrower, and then the pallets in the game because Ellie can't yeah. swim. So it's just yeah. those two things. But again, these are these are tens if you want to use numbers. I hate using numbers, but no, these yeah, are both masterpiece games. So like... Yes. We're basically arguing what's the better masterpiece, and at the end of the day, like yeah. I don't really care because they're both amazing. Yeah. Um. You know what? We could skip. What's better, gold or gold? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's gold or this gold or gold. Um. <laughs> eh, I'm gonna skip that one. I don't think we need to talk about that. Let's talk about. Uh, is this the best game ever made, or at least is this one of the best games ever made? Of course different than what your favorite game of ever made is just saying this for the achievers of course but do you think this is the best game ever made or at least they uh uh while you think about that i think it's at least one of the best starting points for someone playing video games for the first time mm -hmm. you get to throw it on very easy you can enjoy the experience if you have some sort of significant other that you would like to show games for the first time you can show them this and 
this is kind of the incredible entryway to what games can be what games yeah, are striving for right now it's definitely not the best but it's definitely one of the best stories in like worlds that i can ever like be a part of like 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 or uh, experience i agree I, like, I think i do think this is one of the best story in media i think is the yeah. best way i could say that like when a video game can make me cry like it's like you know like they can get me emotional and feel for these characters do you know they're doing something right agreed alex that's it that is the spoiler cast for the last of us part one um I meant to do this in the beginning. I'm going to quickly go through the full cast just to give them some sort of credit just because of how much this I love this game. This will be The Last of Us. This will be The Last of Us, yes. So, of course, Ash, uh, Ellie played by Ashley Johnson. Joel, of course, played by Joy Baker. Sarah was played by Hannah Hayes. Tommy, played by Jeffrey Pierce. Very good actor. Uh, Tess was played by Annie Wershing. Robert was played by Robin Atkin Downs. Bill was played by W. Earl Brown. Marlene, we've talked about before. Meryl Dandridge. Henry is played by Brandon Scott. And Sam was played by Najid Jeter. Top tier casting. I don't know who the casting director was over there, but Jesus Christ. You nailed it. Uh, but mm. that is it for the last of a spoiler cast. Anything you want to leave the Achievers with while we sign off here? It's definitely a game that I have to uh, recommend. It's like if you like if anybody like if anybody like ever asks me, it's like, hey, I just got a, I just got a PlayStation. What game should I play? I'll be like, if you like if you like to immerse yourself in a story, Last of Us. Yeah, and and you won't have to wait too too long because they'll be on PC soon. I'm sure. Part one will be Probably. on PC. I'm sure within the next few months. And yeah. I don't I don't think part two's on there yet, but it will be. So. Like that's Get the ready. first game I always I always recommend. It's like if it was like, hey, if you like a good single player game, Last of Us. It's uh, the first one you have to try. Yep, I was always recommending that. But whenever I asked that, this is probably I think this is the game to recommend in my opinion. Like if mm -hmm. you're gonna recommend a game, what better yet to start here? And I'm glad yeah. Naughty Dog was able to bring it up to standards yeah, to the current standards. Probably one of the best PlayStation IPs that they have. I think I think to me it's without a doubt the best PlayStation game ever made, and that's pretty easy for me to say at least. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us for this a very long spoiler cast, but it's nothing less that the game deserves. Um, this was a very fun experience. Thank you so much, Alex, for joining me for this. Um, yes. Surprisingly, very few people was playing this, and I just caught you at the right time for you to be able to jump back on and help me with the spoiler mm -hmm. cast. And this was for a sure. this was a great great video, probably one of my favorites, probably our best spoiler cast too to date. Um, I think mm. that just kind of speaks to the quality of the game as well, though. But um, yeah, aside sure. from that, uh, Achievers, I don't have anything left for you. Of course, a regularly scheduled Easy Achievers Game Podcast is going to go open live to you Friday. This week, uh, we see the return of Emmett Watkins Jr. Get excited for that. Remember, if you're listening to this in the far future, spoil the cast is kind of evergreen content. Check us out on YouTube. Subscribe. You know, comment, like, share. You, you know what to do. You've used these services long enough. We thank you for any support that you give to the Easy Achievers Game Podcast. And Alex, anything left for you to say? You want to say goodbye to the Achievers? I don't like saying goodbye. So I was going to say, well, it was, was, see was, was, was see you later. We'll yeah. see you later. We'll see you later. You may see me again. Maybe see me another spoiler cast. I'm sure. A spoiler cast. Maybe I'll be able to rope you in into some sort of regularly scheduled Easy Achievers Game Podcast one week, too. Yeah, right. Yep. These kids are, uh, these kids are, uh, are draining me. <laughs> so, forget. Go Chief. Go Chief.